Hi everybody, welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. I'm going to do the English rose. It's the symbol on England's rugby tops. Um, it's a beautiful red rose with a green st um, stem and green leaves and I'm going to try and do it in Fluid Art. Uh, my husband particularly loves the rugby. It's the, I think it's the symbol of England, but the rugby shirts seem to have the symbol on. Um, so I'm going to first of all do a Dutch pour to have to create a whitish base. So white with a bit of silver. Um, then after I'm going to create a stencil, I'm going to do the red rose and I'm going to do the green part. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet. Maybe swipes, but I definitely some cells. Um, I'm not sure, but I'll work it out step by step. So first of all, now I'm going to do the swipe, uh, do the <laughs> do the Dutch pour. My canvas is 40 by 50 centimetres. I wanted um, a rectangular canvas because it's going, it's going to be this way. So if you imagine the red rose here and then the stem down here, I'm going to do an explosive Dutch pour. So I'm going to layer the colours on and then blow from the centre outwards. So I've got white, I've got silver. Um, this is Pebio um, iridescent silver. And then I've also got Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Blue Black. And now I don't want much of this, but I am going to just drizzle a little bit of that on. So these paints, it's my Dutch pour consistency. So it's nice and runny, but I've actually mixed this with PVA glue and water instead of normal flood flow troll. And I'm just trying it because it's a background. I don't really, I'm not worried about cells. I just want a nice neutral co um, covering on the base and it's a lot cheaper. I'm in the UK and Flood Floatrol is expensive and I'm finding, I'm finding it's just getting more and more expensive unfortunately. So as an alternative let's try the PVA glue. So much cheaper and if it's just for the base I think it will be fine. If I was doing um, just solely a Dutch pour I wouldn't do this. I would use the Flood Floatrol because it does create better cells. It, do, it is nicer but I just don't need that for the background of a painting because I don't really think you're going to notice the background. You're going to notice what's on the front of the paint, the, the main feature of the painting. Right, good lot of paint on there. There's loads of air bubbles. So let's put some silver on. I think I'm just going to use my, yeah, I'm going to use my stir stick and I'm just going to dot it on, drizzle it on. Okay, let's try that. So I'm going to use my hairdryer. So I'm just going to blow from the centre outwards in all directions and see what happens. That is absolutely perfect. Absolutely love that. This central bit you're not really going to see, but wow, there's some really cool cells there. But at the edge, I've just got this lovely wave trickle of silver through my white. Yeah, really, really happy. I'm ready to now to do the second part of the pour. The base dried really well. It's lovely and smooth. What I did next was cover the whole canvas in green frog tape. And then I've drawn a picture of the English rose that I want to put on it. Um, and then I've cut it all out. I cut it out with a craft knife. So um, what I can do is just very gently score the green tape and then pick it up and it cuts just the, the tape and not the canvas. I've had a lot of questions about how I actually do this. And I think I might show you in another video if you're interested, create a, a video just about making a stencil. Um, but I can just score around the edge just very lightly and it's enough to break the surface of the tape but not cut the canvas. 
So I've done the whole rose, so the flower and the green leaves, but I've just recovered some of the green um, and put some um, plastic down just to cover it, just to protect it. because I'm going to do just the rose at the moment. So I've mixed up four different colours that I want to use from the rose. So I've got two very red colours. Um, these, this is Amsterdam Carmine and Amsterdam Pyrrole Red. But because I want to do a swipe next, I need a bit of variation. So I've added some copper. I've added some Amsterdam Permanent Red Violet. And then I have made this colour, which is a sort of burgundy colour, which is the deeper red and a little bit of black. So it's just, it's, it's much more burgundy, it's much darker colour. So if I can try and show you the consistency, all these paints are mixed with PVA glue and water pouring medium. And I've mixed it three, no I haven't, I've mixed it two to one. So two parts pouring medium to one part paint. So it's quite runny, it's not, not too thick. So these are going to be the predominant colours but I just want a little bit of the other colours. Now, if you look at the rose, if you look at a picture of this symbol, you'll see that at the very top, it's actually a bit darker. So I want to try and bear that in mind. I want the lighter at the bottom and try and keep the more the burgundy red, maybe just for the top. So I'm going to do um, a stained glass swipe, which means I'm just going to drizzle tiny little jets of the paint all over the rose. I'm then going to dab them to get the little holes to close up because there'll be lots of bits of bare canvas. Just dab it all so the whole canvas is, or the whole rose is then covered in paint. And then I'm going to swipe, probably with some kitchen roll. I've added into all my colours, this you cannot see from this bottle, but this is coconut milk hair serum made by OGX. So I've added in one drop of each, so that's an oil. So when I swipe and then torch, I should get some really pretty cells. Right, so I'm going to just drizzle it on. So this is the really dark one. So I just really want that around the top. Right, I'm quite happy with that because you can really see the different blend. You can see that darker at the top quite nicely. So yeah, I'm happy so far. I've changed my mind about what I'm going to swipe with. I'm actually going to swipe with plastic. So I've got this really thin white plastic. I'm going to swipe with that. Um, now, I don't particularly want straight lines because you wouldn't get straight lines in a rose. So I'm going to swipe in a wiggly pattern. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do one line, leave a gap and do the other line. Because if you think when I'm swiping to one side, I'm pushing the paint in this direction. If I do all my swipes in the same direction, I'm going to have quite thin paint here, quite thick paint here. So if you imagine I do one towards my right, I'm going to then turn it and then I'm going to do it back the other way. So every other line will be one direction every other line will be in the other direction and i just feel like that will just spread the balance of the paint a little bit more i might be wrong but it in my head it that, that seems to make sense so i'm just going to start somewhere very randomly in the middle i'm just going to touch it onto the paint and do lots of little tiny wiggly lines I'm doing them it quite a small wiggle because by doing that I think I'm going to get a bit more detail and actually it should be less obvious the the wiggle I don't want it to look I don't particularly want to see the lines of the swipes um, so this should disguise it a bit more certainly compared to if I was doing a straight line Right, so that's all the swipes in one direction. Now, I would much rather swipe to the right. So if I turn it upside down, and I can still go to the right, but obviously it's in the opposite direction now. Right, 
like really happy. Some of the lines are quite obvious. So example here. So I think what I'm going to do is just cut a thinner piece of card and just do another swipe at that line just to help it to just blend in a bit more. going to go for a lot of torching I want a lot of cells right really happy you've got the gradient of color you can see obvious lines which I guess is not what I wanted but actually once I've peeled all of the tape up to reveal the flower I think this is going to work perfectly because you can see the cells, but they're subtle, and that is exactly what I want, but you've got that beautiful gradient, so brighter red at the bottom, and then darker at the top. I can see little bits of the bronze, sorry, the copper coming through, and also the purple, but it's subtle. Right, really, really happy. Let me show you up close. So there's just a beautiful blend of all the five colors. Tiny little cells crammed in, so lots of really tiny detail when you look up close. And the sparkle there in that bronze, that's really pretty. So lots and lots of detail, but when you stand back, you don't see the detail as much. So you're going to see the shape of the rose much clearer. Now with the leaves, if you look at the image, the top half of the leaves is all darker than the bottom half. So I'm not going to put the dark green on the bottom. I'm only going to use it on the top. And then maybe the light one... In fact, no, I'm going to use the iridescent one throughout. The I think I'm going to use this green. Um, which green was it again? The brilliant green on the bottom half. I think that should work. So, in fact, let's do that first. Or should I do that last? I'm going to do it last. Let's put some of this green down. So exactly the same as before. I'm just going to drizzle this over. roses I just swiped in one direction it makes more sense to me to actually swipe each leaf individually if I possibly can it, it's difficult to see them now but I'm going to swipe in the direction of the from the stem to the tip of the leaf um, again I'm going to probably do wiggly lines in fact I might not I might just do straighter lines because they're going to be quite small so I've just got a really thin piece of, pra uh, pl of plastic so if I think the stem is there, what about if I kind of just swipe it like this? So let's torch it now. And again, I'm going to torch quite a lot because I'd like lots and lots of little cells to just give some really pretty detail. Just so happy with the lines, so happy that I swiped in the direction of the leaves because it just gives detail to it. It just makes it just look that little bit more realistic. The blend is beautiful. There's obviously a lot more contrast with these greens, but I just think that works really, really nicely. So, so happy. The cells again, perfect size. I've got my consistency spot on because I think the size of these cells, I think matches roughly the size of the cells in the red section. So fingers crossed this dries well and then the really nerve wracking bit when I pull up all the tape.
It's finally finished. It's taken a while. I've loved it though. Every single second of doing this, um, just so happy to be trying something new and experimenting. And I'm so happy with the end result. Um, let me show you first of all the red. It's quite dark at the top and then it just blends down so you've got the lighter. Beautiful little cells that are subtle and that's exactly what I wanted. I've outlined everything in the Posca pen, in black Posca pen, so it really defines it. I'm over the moon with the green. I love how the swiping actually had more of an impact on the design. So I swiped in the, in the direction of the leaves and that is something really to take forward for next time to really think about the direction that I'm swiping. So for example, for the rose, could I actually have, have swiped in circles? Would that have actually looked better than straight lines? So I've definitely, definitely learned from that. And the colors are beautiful. That green, that just it just really is bright. It just really flashes through the darkness, the dark green there. Um, and then as you can see, I've painted a border. So I've just used the bronze that was in the painting, in the red. Um, gone around the edge and then just use it again a black Posca pen just to outline it to frame it um, so I am so so happy I'm, I'm happy with the result but I'm also happy with the technique that there was no leaking the, well I say there was no the only leak was there where the red leaked underneath that is all so the technique of putting that frog tape down and heating it up with the heat gun to stick it works there is zero leaking of the green it i just got really crisp precise edges so really happy with this technique and um, please let me know what you think please leave me a comment on you, what you think of the process of the painting the end result i'd love to hear what other people think about this great thanks so much for watching Take care. Bye.